Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I don't know if you want to do an introduction yes, of the moment. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, today's training. Hi, well, first off, hi, everybody. I know we're short some people, so we should have uh, a number of people trickling. So, we're going to go ahead and get started for the sake of time. Um, our trainer today is Stephen Holt, um, who is Stephen the Mr. Holt, Pastor Holt, Mr. Holt. Uh, is, is a gentleman who I've known for some years, who I've had the pleasure of sitting under his leadership, and I've learned so much. And so as we started putting together this program, um, and we're we'll talking about some of the different aspects that we wanted to hit, and he came to my mind as something who might be able to really help, uh, help us get to where we want to take all of you. So, um, well established in his own practices, and, and I'll let him tell a little bit more about himself, or as much about himself. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the I'm excited about the privilege of gathering. Um, I run a business called Try Excellence, and Try Excellence is specifically designed for facilitation and education. So I uh, have contracts with the city of Portland, city of Gresham, where I do diversity, equity, and inclusion training, um, and a host of other facilitations with bureaus and the staff and the others. I've been doing this for a while. Um, yeah, uh, two decades officially and about uh, three decades all together. So I've been at it for a little bit. Yeah, I started when I was seven. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have fun. Today is an interactive time. I chaired the oversight committee for the North Northeast Housing Strategies of the City of Portland. So I'm engaged in a variety of things to address some of the right things. Today we're going to talk about communication, the art of connecting. We've got a handout with you, and I want to be sensitive to our time. Um, if we could have done it differently, we'd be sitting in a different kind of uh, styling and so forth, but we'll just pretend that we're all close together and we can interact in a way that makes it easy. I like the fact that everybody knows each other, so it's just going to be a simple flow. Is that agreeable? Yeah. Okay. If you get my next slide, you guys all have handouts, so you can follow right along. So today, our outline or our approach, this is very much a very uh, condensed uh, workshop kind of approach. And so we're going to go over some principles of agreement, we're going to work through terms and definitions. We're going to talk about three elements of communication, we'll do a little exercise stuff, uh, the goal of communication, and we'll talk about some applications. And hopefully we'll get all of that done in the next few minutes to get back to your lives. So everybody has some blank space uh, underneath the slides if you want to take notes. I see this one. I've taken notes for the past few years. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And this is high engagement. This is us. We're dialoguing. We're interacting. So it isn't my up here giving a speech. It's us talking together. Fair enough? Cool. Uh, let's talk about principles of agreement then, how we're going to conduct business today. And so here are examples, what I call principles of agreement, or um, our rules of engagement, or whatever you want to title it as. Participation, that we all participate as an agreed upon thing. Can we agree with that? So, uh, respect of one another and each other's ideas. Who would add anything for a principle of agreement for today? Anything you think that needs to be put up there? Anything else that you'd say? Turn off your cell phones. Turn off your cell phones. Yes, perfect. Great idea. I would suggest do not be shy that there's no silly thought or question um, and put it out there for all of our learning. So if you have a thought that comes to you or a question, put it out there um, because there's probably somebody else who's thinking or questioning. To um, allow for your ideas as they come out to not be fully caught out. So they're going to sound a little rough because we haven't thought about them yet. We're, we're just kind of going with it. Yeah, perfect. Call that spitballing. <laughs> Toss it out there. Absolutely. And with that, then we're not going to, among us, begin to critique. Yes. We just want to hear. We're just going to interact, right? Perfect. Anything else? 
or principle of agreement. Oh, my fault. I didn't get somebody to scribe. We need a designated scribe. Someone to catch these wonderful thoughts. Who's willing to scribe for us? Capture. Right Perfect. Okay. So can we go back through those principles of agreement? We have the ones that are already on. The ones that were mentioned. So, somebody said, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Turn yourself on the <laughs> Don't be shy. Turn off cell phones. Spitball. You need an outline today. It's right there by the edge. And grab a cup with goodies. Please. Because if you don't, then I've got to take them with me. And that can be problematic. I'll help you out. Okay, thank you. You got me. Thank you. Okay, was there anything else that we, that we didn't get? Spitball. Don't be shy. Um, turn on cell phones. Is there another one? Yes? I'd like to propose being the scribe instead so that she can. I'm one of the coordinators. I'd rather you be able to like freely participate instead of have to worry about writing. Okay. So I'll, I'll take notes. Oh, right. Yeah. Thank you. What's your name? Cynthia. Cynthia, mm -hmm. to meet you. Okay. Um, let's go to our next slide then. Very nice one. We're going to get the terms. Communication. Communication is imparting or exchanging information. This is in its most base, elementary kind of definition. All of the definitions, this is what I believe about terms, this is what I believe about words. I believe words are important. I believe terms are significant. And this is what I, I believe about the importance of them, is that <clears throat> defining the words, we're used, the words we use is necessary to make sure we're speaking the same language. Because if we don't define our terms, we might use the same terms, but we have different meanings. And if we have a different meaning with the same term, ultimately it's going to be problematic. I think I'm talking about one thing, you think we're talking about something else. So for the purpose of communication, very base, very simplistic kind of definitions today. So communication is imparting or exchanging information, that's it. But communication is verbal and nonverbal. Can you give me an example? Who would like to be uh, uh, our illustration of nonverbal communication? First of all, do we agree with nonverbal communication? Do we agree that it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Would you like to give me an example of nonverbal communication? Huh? <laughs> uh huh. Pointing. Posture. I'm actually turning my back. You're turning your back. Okay. Crossing the arms. Mm -hmm. She's smiling, so that makes it hard. <laughs> right? Frowning. Right? What about this one? Right here. Heard that one. <laughs> Heard that one? Was I talking? Oh, yeah. Was I communicating? <laughs> Absolutely. And I said nothing. Communication is verbal and nonverbal. It's posture. It's facial expression. It is how we sit. It is how we stand. It is how we move. Right? It's also part of your branding, but we're not doing branding. Uh, so size, everything. All of it. Right? <laughs> it, is, it is to be consciously aware of self. So you put that in It's about the consciousness that I'm aware of me. Because I'm communicating all the time. As I walk from point A to point B, if I'm walking like this, or if I'm walking like this, <laughs> right? It's all communication. So it's verbal and nonverbal. The three elements then, or the three aspects of communication based on how I approach it, is speaking, listening, and understanding. All three go together if we're going to communicate. Next slide. Let's talk some more about that. Speaking. Speaking is the use of words to convey information, thoughts, and or feelings. Again, simple definition. The use of words to convey some information, some thoughts, some feelings. It is what I say, when I say it, where I say it, and how I say it. So speaking is more than words. There's a wonderful commercial out. I wanted to get it pulled up. 
and we didn't uh, have the time to do it. But there's a wonderful commercial I got. Oh, you have it? Stay far? Beautiful. Let's watch the commercial. They're going to say the same words you tell me if they're saying the same thing. This is my car. Stay far, you know, is it for everyone else? Oh, yes. This is ridiculous. There's one of these. One of my statements about technology is technology is wonderful when it works. Oh. Boom! Good job. Some of you are amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're so we're gonna we're gonna stay. we're gonna get it. Yes. Right back. Okay. Is this my car? Stay far enough. Is it for everyone? Who plays moments. This is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? <laughs> this is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. <laughs> This is what I mean. 
It's impossible to listen and speak at the same time. It's impossible for me to be talking and you to be talking and I'm actually listening to what you're saying. Would you agree with that? Now I can talk while you're speaking without opening my mouth. Because I'm talking in my head. Hello. Right? I'm preparing my response as you're dialoguing. Anybody in here ever had an experience where you're talking with someone you finish what you have to say, and then begin to respond to something you did not say. Way back when that ever happened. What do you think happened? They weren't listening. They weren't listening. Or selective listening. Selective listening. That's a good one. Selective listening. By that you mean? I mean they heard what they wanted to hear because that's what they wanted to believe. Heard what they wanted to hear? Oftentimes what happens is something triggers. I hear a certain phrase, a certain tone, a certain word, and it takes me to a place of reference, and I'm responding from that place of reference, and not necessarily the current conversation. To listen and to listen well is to be present. I have to be here with you right now. We have to be in current communication, right? And if I'm going to listen and listen well, then I have to intentionally keep my mind from wondering. Keep my mind from jumping. Jumping to conclusions. Oftentimes the only exercise some people get. Got to process in the moment. Any comment on that? A good tool around listening, active listening, is to paraphrase what a person said. Right? Paraphrase. Once you've heard what they've said, am I understanding correctly that you mean this, that, 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 that? Especially when you are dealing with difficult topics. Especially in the midst of difficult topics. Or confrontational moments. Or hard situations or difficult things to talk through. Okay? Because the goal behind all that I suggest is understanding. And understanding is. The ability to comprehend what's been heard. Understanding is not necessarily agreement. Understanding is to capture what's been heard. Catch the difference between the two. For me to understand you, the way I say it is for us to stand under the same words. We're standing in the same place, that we've got clarity, that I can pair it back, that I can communicate back, that I can speak back to you what you said. And I'm clear on your meaning with it. It does not mean that I agree with you. I may not see eye to eye on the topic, but I am clear with where you're at on the topic and why you process the way you process around the topic. Comments, thoughts, questions about that? Yes. I don't know what it is, but a comment, I guess. Mm -hmm. When I'm practicing active listening and I'm speaking with somebody who's a little more zippy than I am, mm -hmm. they seem frustrated that I'm processing and I don't have something to fire back at them immediately. Do you have suggestions for anyone else? I certainly do. And we'll come back and we'll work through. It might come up in our next slide or so to address some of that around communication, with communication's a goal, and communication's back. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. How do you stand under the same words? How do you stand under? A um, couple of tools, a couple of tactics. When I say that, when I'm talking about going back to this thing I started with, with terms and definitions. So when someone says a thing, being clear that I understand what they mean by what they're saying. When you say such and such, did you mean thus and so? And they can say no. Or they say exactly, duh, or however they respond to that. The goal is, and we come to this point because you're going to get to it in a moment what the goal of communication is. The goal is that we can get to a point where we can really engage. At least that's the hope behind communication. Effective communication. And again, I'm talking about communication from the standpoint of valuing a relationship. So I, I've jumped in with some assumptions. So I value, the, I value the arena, I value the 
relationship. I value the dynamic. In other words, it matters to me. So in a professional arena, why would it matter to me that we communicate well? Anybody? To get things done. To get things done. Because your management has power over you. Because your management has power. What do you mean by that? They have authority. They have decision-making power over your work life. You want to keep your job? Yeah. <laughs> right? I'd like to keep my job, so it's important that we communicate well. Okay, get things done. Why else is it important in this environment, in a professional environment, that we communicate? Okay. To achieve a purpose. To achieve a purpose. A lot of jobs are teamwork, so you have to work as a team, and if you're not talking, you're not really a team. And that doesn't happen in the city. <laughs> That's not even an issue in the city at all. And emailing does part of the, the challenge, I'll get you a second start. Part of the challenge, I'll get back to you too. Part of the challenge in our fast paced, um, high tech society is we make a lot of assumptions. And we assume that emails are communication. They're not. <laughs> They're not communication. Because communication has three elements speaking, listening, and it's understanding. You with me? You with me? Emails don't complete the loop. Text messages, right? All of the technology that we use leaves holes or gaps. And I am sure, just by show of hands, no names, safe space, safe space, I am sure that there are a few of us in this room who've received some emails that left us either dumbfounded, frustrated, or definitely not connected. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. There we go. Yeah. Sir. Oh, um, communication is also important because it brings insight to a personality. It allows you to break down some communication barriers, also learn the person's communication style. Yeah. Learn the process, be learn the way on process. Yeah. And like you said, learn how to stand up and you come to a place where you can mutually understand the person or the coming. You don't have to agree, but you can confirm that you understand and move forward. Yeah. We have thought, I'll come to you in just a second, we have thought that in terms of communication, effective communication, that agreement is the goal. Well, in order for us to get to agreement, somebody has to win, someone has to lose. Consider it. Because agreement means that I need to get you to see it like I see it. Or you need to get me to see it like you see it. So that means I've got to change how I see it in order to see it like you do. Or you have to change how you see it in order to see it like I do. You might see a problem with that. If I think communication is about agreement, now we're going into fight. We're in war. We're in that. I'm going to stand on my position. <laughs> Because, you know, all of us love to change, right? I'm going to stand on my position. You're going to stand on your position. And we're doing this. And we're not getting anywhere. But if we understand that communication is about something else, if we understand that communication is about connecting, we'll get there in just a second. Then it's easier for me to stand under. Come to this point of clarity. Now we have this respectful, mutual engagement. You were going to say? I was going to say, I think communication is about building trust. Absolutely. Good communication leaves something. Okay, let's keep processing. But now, what would it be also about you just sharing rather than the, the battle? You see, it, it, could be it should be. That's what it should be. If, I'm not, if we're not working toward agreement, if we're working toward understanding, then yeah, that's all it is. It's this exchange of ideas, it's an exchange of information. It is an ability for me to gain insight, for me to gain clarity, right? For us to have this sense of grasping. I get it. Oh, the aha moment. Oh, I get it. Now I see. Why do you think that this guy is brown? <laughs> Now, from a leadership role, though, there's a little more to it. 
Because leaders have greater influence. Leaders carry with them greater responsibility. It's a part of the office. It is the reality of the office. And so, we talk about speaking, we will talk about the influence of words. My words, to my then, uh, prior to now, they are all adult, but my words, and I guess it's still kind of the same, but my words to my children had a different impact than my words simply to neighbors. Because I have a different position. My words to my grandchildren have a different impact than just my words to others. So based on your position, you have uh, an influence. Here is what I would call a pebble. It's the illustration is that when you speak, depending on the level of your position, you speak with pebbles, rocks, stones, and boulders. Okay? Pebbles, rocks, stones, and boulders. So all of your words are like pebbles, or they're like rocks. Or like stones, or they're like boulders. And you're tossing them into a pond. And the pond is your environment. The pond is your realm. This is not specifically spelled out, so you can take notes if you choose. The pond is your environment, your realm, your arena. If I took this pebble and I tossed it into a pond, what would happen? Tiny ripples. A little splash, maybe. Ripple. And then tiny ripples. Ripple effects. A lasting impact of this. Probably goes away pretty quick. What about that? I'll call this a rock. A little weightier in the pebble. A little weightier in the pebble. A little weightier. A little bit. If I toss the rock into the pond, what happens? Bigger splash. More ripples. Stone you take, they're going to take this because of the influence and the perspective they are. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. But you could also be loud and get attention for us. Absolutely true. I don't know if everybody heard you, so if you could say it again and say it louder so that everybody can catch you. If you don't mind, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was saying, yeah, you could be loud and empty or, you know, be small but very dense in the, the kind of uh, ideas and uh, uh, that you are trying to share with uh, your surroundings. So it's not uh, you know, always being the loudest. I, I have people like that in, in my group. They're loud all the time. <laughs> they they want to provide meetings. They're not saying yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, yeah. Any topic you touch, they are there. Anything they are there. But you know, it's not always, you know. Yeah, substance time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, we're not talking necessarily about the type or style. We're talking about the weight and the impact. And specifically, and most, most intentionally, as you're growing in leadership, beginning to understand that your words carry more weight because they're your words. As a leader, we speak with stones and with boulders, even when we're trying to skip pedals. Because you're a leader. And leaders carry influence. That's what leadership is. Leadership is influence. Now, for some, we wield it well, and others just be put into a place, not necessarily developed or trained, and how to carry this weight. It's part of the, I'll say this quickly and we'll move on. Part of the reality of, of leadership is leadership has its own persona, has its own influence. The office alone has its own responsibility and authority. And an individual who then gets put into that chair may or may not know. So sometimes what happens is someone can put into a position of responsibility and authority they didn't necessarily ask for. Don't necessarily have the training or equipment for them. And <clears throat> have all kinds of impact in an environment. Comments, thoughts about anything we've covered? Yeah, go ahead. So it sounds like you're saying the art of leadership and communication is recognizing the impact of the Yeah. 
Well, from an intern's perspective, just to, to try to address it simplistically and quickly, um, <clears throat> difficult because the resources or the capacity are limited as an intern. Hopefully, um, that intern will have a peer to the manager or someone who's a safe space where they can share, not in a gossip manner, but in a way that's impacting, and then that, that manager can hear from the peer where there's peer support. But I'll flip it to the other side is when there are others around, and you know how manager functions and interacts and, and operates, or a leader functions, interacts and operates. Part of the responsibility of leadership is to talk to them. It's for you to say. Because they can hear it differently from a peer than they hear it from a subordinate. We hear differently from peers than we hear from subordinates. It's just the reality about it. So that's my simple suggestion. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thought that came to my mind, especially as you were referencing the boulder being thrown into the lake, mm -hmm. saying that it can knock out all the water, is that as leaders, we have to be mindful of the displacement that our words may cause. So if it's a pebble, you know, people can get charred. But if it's a boulder, um, how they're receiving it, you know, they can be completely displaced. And I think for a lot of us in this room, the reason that we wanted to focus on women and people of color in this leadership development training is because oftentimes we are the ones that are impacted with those words. Um, yeah. So we, we ourselves also have to be mindful of how our words may be impacting and affecting those who we are communicating with. So it is our environment, but our environment could be the person that we're having the direct conversation with. Because if you toss me that pebble, I'll catch the pebble, no, no problem. You toss, you toss me the rock, I'll catch the rock. You toss me the stone, I'm going to move out of the way. <laughs> and you better believe I'll be sprinting if I see a boulder coming at me. <laughs> right. 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 I might knock some others over. Right. But we've also we have to take into consideration our responsibilities as employees. Um, granted, there's always some imperfections, but as professionals, we have to learn to stand out. There's some things that we may not agree with. There might be some people we cannot communicate with. But that's also why we have something like this teaching us how to develop. Some people aren't willing to develop their skill set. Some people have studied where they are, and this is their definition. It takes a certain type of person to understand that you have to grow and look to yourself and be healthy about it. So, I mean, it depends on which what path you're going to take. Because, you know, it's like you can play with everybody and it won't change. But if you take some initiative at home, understand the situation, evolve from it, learn what not to do. So when you're in that position, you can be better. And I think also that's a great point, also learning how to communicate from that position of receiving a stone or a boulder and saying, I love that you brought up standing under again, because if I can understand from your perspective, even if I don't agree with it, I can communicate to you I understand that you were trying to communicate this. This is what was actually communicated. And this is how I took it, this is how I received it, though I understand it may not have been your intent. Right, the definition is perhaps the intent. And if I didn't say it, uh, and I know you already know this, but put it down somewhere, uh, it's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree. We will never always agree. Any married people in here? <laughs> Any married folks? <laughs> Do you, do you ever disagree with your spouse? Does that ever happen? Ever? Okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to go even farther, go even farther than that. You don't always agree with yourself. Isn't that true? There are times you've made a decision, you go, what in the world was that? I can't believe that. And you have this conversation with yourself. Who talks to themselves? Everybody. Who answers themselves? Everybody. I have a conversation with myself all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's okay to disagree. Yeah, I was uh, thinking of another example recently. Um, in my office, there's a new hire who is in sort of a higher up position. Mm -hmm. um, and this person came into an office that already had a pretty strong uh, problem with communication amongst mm -hmm. the employees. So mm -hmm. it was a really pretty tense environment. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I noticed that there were times when I, I felt like, sort of uncomfortable or like some red flags coming from this person, but not on like a direct communication way. And it, I see now that this is sort of like a nonverbal communication yeah. information I was receiving from yeah. them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm used to being able to be put in a position
position where I can kind of stand on my own and say, no, I don't agree with you, but you know, I'm going to do it this way, you can do it this way. And I feel confident enough with myself that his words felt like pebbles to me. And I just kind of moved out of the way, and, and that's, that's going to be the working relationship for now. But to other people in the office, those words and his actions created a much bigger problem. And I, I recognized that it wasn't just affecting me, that it was affecting the whole office. It affects the pond. So I, I, I found a way to, to try to talk to one of the other women that I worked with to see what her side of the story was and to see how she was getting along with the same person. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a pretty reasonable amount of concern. This person was raising their voice at other people in the office as well. So, um, having to find a way to express that to my supervisor has been difficult because um, I don't really know specifically what to explain about what's happening because it's not the words that this person is yeah. saying, it's the way that they're saying it. Yeah. And that's sometimes not always easy to describe. Yeah. That, do, does this, do the tools, do the words, do, does the concepts we're talking about, does that help at all? Uh, a lot, yeah. Actually, it's, it's given me a lot more to think about one of the, and we're not on conflict resolutions, we'll get here at some point. One of the things that's important, I'm going to use this to illustrate something we call this the issue. This is the issue, what we're dealing with, whatever the issue represents. One of the things that's important, and, and the value around communication, the value around communication is the goal of communication, which is connecting. I'll get there in just a second. But we run into an issue, it's important to separate the issue from the individual. Talking about the issue. So we want to identify behaviors, activities, the whatever the specifics are, yeah. as opposed to Bob. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm just talking about Bob, mm -hmm. then Bob becomes the issue. Mm -hmm. And whenever I see Bob, what am I gonna see? The issue. There's the issue. Yeah. As soon as he walks in the room, and he's gonna get some nonverbal communication. <laughs> Can I get a witness in the room? is listening because listening sets the tone and impact, impacts the environment. Our ability, your ability, my ability to hear, to keep my mouth closed and my mind open, to stay present and stay engaged impacts the pond. I can, you can, we can help to ease some of the pebbles, rocks, stones, and holes by staying present. Right? By gauging ourselves and then articulating. You know, it's kind of <coughs> kind of harsh. I don't know if you meant it that way. It's going to come across rather aggressive. I don't know why I feel that way. Well, probably because you're steaming. <laughs> your brow is furrowed. And there's smoke coming off your skin. <laughs> so that's why it looks a little impactful. You're glaring me down when you're talking. I'm thinking there's an issue. <laughs> Listening is important. Understanding. Understanding creates culture. It establishes our standards. If we work to get to a point where what we do is get to understanding, it will impact the culture of your pond. It will impact your environment. And it will set the standard for what I think to be an incredible working environment. Next slide. Our time is running out. So, here's the goal of communication. The goal of communication, based on how I teach it, is connection, not expression. Okay, kind of back to the question you asked earlier. Connection. And connection is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. Everybody will do this with your fingers for me. Do this with your fingers. Like That's the goal of communication. It's the link. It's a relationship. It's to come together. It is this understanding. Communication isn't simply just expression. The process of conveying one's thoughts or feelings, the look on someone's face, the face for the particular emotion, so forth, all of the nonverbal things we talked about, getting it off your chest. If I communicate, I need to get this off my chest. I've been carrying this thing around for a while, at this spot, have these ideas on my chest for a while, and I need to get it off. What happens when I get it off my chest? 
I put it on someone else's. I get it off my chest, how do I feel? Whew. Light! Now it's carrying that thing around. Woo! Feels so much better now. I got it off my chest. And the person you're looking at can't breathe. So <laughs> you. But you just put it on my chest. Right? Communication's goal <clears throat> is connection, not simply expression. And I fear that what happens too much around communication is what we have is expression. We have people who are talking, who are just just saying what their thoughts are, putting out the information, giving directives with no effort to do this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So are you saying that expression is dumping? We can call it dumping. So there is no expression that isn't dumping? No. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that all expression is dumping. I'm saying that... There's nothing valuable with expression? I didn't say that. Okay. I'm talking in the context of connecting. So we're talking in the context of communication is, the goal is connection, not simply expression. I'll go back to where I started. In terms of the value and the context of the environment. And so I'm talking in the environment of the work world. In the environment of our community and engagement. Does that make sense? So in that context, the goal of communication is connection. Now, are there points when I need to express something? I do. But I have to be very aware of how it's going to impact my environment. Very aware of it. Coming up. It sounds like communication, it's the way you're talking about it, is always influenced by a hierarchy. What do you mean? That there's something about, um, there's no equality, that, that that connection is being more the equality and that any kind of expression or leadership, um, the person who has a hierarchy, the ones above, has to be more aware of how to be able to connect um, because they have some form of power over. I would say that's true. I would say that's absolutely true. The, the, broad, the, the bigger my role, the greater my responsibility. It is my responsibility as the leader for the environment. That's what leadership is. Absolutely. Unfortunately, our politicians don't understand that, but a lot of them, on a broader scale, don't understand that. But yes, the bigger the scale that you're in, the greater responsibility you carry for the environment you influence. Absolutely. I'm not free to express every feeling I have in the environment. I, I can't. And that's what's unfortunate, and that's real. We understand that. But too often, when, and just from a sense of hierarchy, because I'm, I'm I'm just talking principles of communication, but from the sense of hierarchy, the individuals who are in a position of authority have to be extremely conscious because we carry boulders and stones. So is there a real connection when there's that hierarchy? There can be. I think so. But it's the responsibility of the influencer to create it. It is not the responsibility of the, just for the sake of this conversation, it's not the responsibility of the subordinate to create that. It is the responsibility of the subordinate to participate in that. But it's the leader who sets the pace. So can you do a training for all of our supervisors? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to question. Yeah. Just so for that example. Does that make sense now? Well, what if the subordinate feels that to relieve some of the stress that this person can communicate, they build that kind of communication you know, because sometimes, like you said, the responsibility, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Portray that kind of, you know, that kind of persona because people might question or abuse mm -hmm. you know, that relationship over their, you know, authority. It is a challenge. It's a challenge. We talk about, obviously, it's, it's challenging. Communication is um, uh, the, the foundation for everything that we do. And it's probably the most difficult thing that we do. So uh, I'd love to offer simple right. fixes that aren't any. Right? It's just that effort. 
It's that willingness to stay engaged. And it's why some people quit jobs, leave workspaces, quit jobs they love. Because how they talk to you, how they communicate with you, how people interact with you. Right? Yeah. I think by understanding one part, which is part of saying that communication is a two way channel. You know, as a leader, you communicate, and then people that are subordinates do, you communicate. Mm -hmm. So the question is how, as a subordinate, do you communicate to somebody in a position of power without? You know, uh, picking up the battle, mm -hmm. communicating, or oh, without necessarily shooting yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent question. Any ideas among those of us who are here? Good. Um, could you repeat the last part of your comment? Yes. Yes. The question. I think it sounds very good. If I can remember, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to paraphrase it. You tell me if I get it. The last part. I'll try to paraphrase it. Tell me if I get it. That that she was referring to what Yvonne was saying, that communication from her understanding is a two-way street. It isn't just from the leader and the subordinate. Right. But from the subordinate, how do you communicate through your leader without shooting yourself in the foot? Yeah. Especially when it's difficult. Right. right? So how do you do that without going to the Any ideas, any suggestions, any thoughts, any responses? Yes, sir. Um, so one thing that I try to practice, especially with my leaders, is, um, I guess it, it, it comes to that point of standing under, right? Um, if our leaders are using words, terms, phrases, um, or putting out ideas that they want, you know, let's say the, the idea is they want it to, uh, leader says they want to have an open door policy, you can come talk to me whenever you want. Um, but every time you go knock on the door, like, hey, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> talk to them whenever I get that moment to talk to the leader is use their words. Say back to them what they said to you. Absolutely. And so get to that place of standing under, that place of understanding, is this what you meant? So prayer, paraphrasing, saying that, did you mean when you said you want to have an open door policy, that I can come knock on your door whenever I want to talk to you about whatever respective issues I have to talk to you about? If they say yes, then you can say, well, Practice so far has been every time I come to knock on your door, you turn me away. So I just want to reconcile, you know, what you said with what your actions are, and that that is a practice that I personally try to utilize is taking their words, not to use it against them, but to come to a place of understanding. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's accountability and that's wisdom. Say it back to whoever what they said. Ask questions. Right. Lead with the question, not assumption. Ask a question based on, and then try to identify specific actions. It's hard to address emotions, but you can address actions. And part of the, for those of us who learn active listening, you know that uh, the thing is I put it in a phraseology, I identify the action, and then I can talk about how it made me feel. I felt such and such. I feel alienated, left out when this, that, and that happens. So I have a specific action that we're talking about so we can address the action so we have a corrected outcome. It's never easy, it's a challenge. Hopefully some tools come out of it. So application, practice, 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 practice. <coughs> Communication is something we will practice, 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 practice until we are near it. First rule of it is lead yourself. You lead you. I'll go back to the whole concept, conversation around expression. I, as an influencer, am conscious of my expressions all the time. Have to be. In an arena that I influence, I have to be aware of myself. Lead me first. Example one is me. Control me. I can't blurt. I can't dump. I can't go off. I can't fly out, I can't lose my control in the midst of the moment without understanding. I just drop some boulders and some stones and there's going to be impact of the actual leader. Doesn't mean that we won't have intensities, but I've got to be prepared for the outcome associated, the impact associated with my actions. 
You were going to say? Well, you, you finished. I, I was just, I was feeling like we were dehumanizing the leadership position. I, I'm an emotional person and I struggle with that, but it happens. And I think the more important thing is how you deal with the impact after the fact. Are you professional in saying, well, I own that, that was a bl I blurted something I shouldn't have. But that's human nature. I mean, part of what makes me a great leader is that I'm sensitive and emotional. It's just bringing it in so it's appropriate or dealing with it appropriately afterwards. Like, you know, I'm human. Right, 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 right. Just saying you can't. That. Is, <laughs> Being aware of it. Being aware, yeah. And then owning, as you yes. just said, okay. right? Got to own it because if if you don't own it, and the environment never knows when you're going to explode, right? How does that impact right. the environment? Uniforms. Um, think before and while you speak. Think before and while. Think before and while and while you speak. I'm saying we've all heard. Think before you speak. Yeah, we'll keep thinking. Please, <laughs> while you're talking. Please keep thinking. Remember this, cover rocks don't bother what you say, when you say, how you say it, what you say. Think as you listen, mind open, mouth closed. Because communication is about us. It's about us. It's not about me. It's not about you. What else would you add? Anything in terms of the plot? Anything else you'd add? And I know our time is shot. Folks gotta run away. Um, I know you spoke about how texting or email is not communication. But if that's it's a portion of it. It's a portion of it. Yeah. If you are somebody that you don't have a shared language, meaning you both speak English, yeah. and you're speaking to somebody who might be ASL or you might have some you know, Spanish or Russian, if you have that and you don't have that ability to speak to each other, is it not communication then? Or is it not it's not we can't connect because we don't have that speaking portion? We can't come under that you know, we can't stand under the same umbrella pretty much. By no means what I, if that's how I'm, I'm no, 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 by no means, no. Is it possible to do that? Yes. What is the work associated with that? It's that clarity of terms. It's that extra effort to make sure that you're saying both what you need to say and that that individual who's, who's getting it is clear on what you mean, that you're clear on what they, it's going to take that. Yeah, that give and take. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to involve that speaking portion. But to be mindful that right. our written concepts are still right. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Absolutely. Great. Right. <clears throat> Perfect. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I um, appreciate your time. Thank you. I think we're gonna have a graduation.